we're going to start out the module talking about congenital and genetic disorders. So, um, like everything in this module, congenital and genetic disorders could affect any of the systems that we've talked about. Um, so it can be something that affects a single system or it can be something that affects many systems. And we'll talk about some different ones. So genetic information in our cells is stored in chromosomes. In humans, we have 23 pairs, um, 22 pairs of our autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes. If you're female, you have two X's, and if you're male, you have an X and a Y. Um, the karyotype is a visual representation of chromosomes arranged in order of size. So um, just when they first started doing this, they started counting with the biggest ones, number one, they're the biggest ones, and 22 are the smallest ones, and then X and Y are on their own. Um, it's A lot of times it's used in the diagnosis of chromosomal disorders. This is um, an example from the book. The, the top two, one, uh, the one on the left is female, the one on the right is male. They're normal male and female. They have the 22 pair of autosomes and the two sex chromosomes. Um, the bottom two are um, bottom left is a male with Down syndrome, trisomy 21. You see there are three uh, 21 chromosomes. And um, the bottom right is a female with a translocation involving chromosomes 14 and 15, where um, part the second 15 chromosome gets tacked onto 14, and we'll talk about why that's a problem in a little bit. So the genotype is your actual genetic information. It's um, the genes that you have. All of our cells, except our gametes, um, have the same genotype. So a, a cell in your liver, a neuron, a skin cell in your pinky toe, um, a cell from your small intestine, um, one of your, uh, a cell in your retina, they all have the same genotype. Just not all the genes are expressed in all cells. And it's a little bit of a mystery um, how, it, you know, during development, how does that happen? That some genes are expressed and some genes are not expressed, and when they're expressed. Um, so it, it's, it's nice that there's some mysteries out there, but um, the phenotype is the expression of the genes. So it's the appearance of your individual characteristics. So um, when we talk about disorders, the genotype is the genetic makeup, and the phenotype is the physical manifestation of the inherited trait or the disorder or disease. Um, in cancer, both genotype and phenotype can keep changing over time because you're getting a lot of mutations in cancer, and we'll talk more about that in Chapter 20. So um, congenital disorders are disorders that are present at birth. So that includes inherited disorders or genetic disorders or developmental disorders. And we'll talk about the um, difference between the two. So I put the relax, nothing is under control slide on here because there are things we can control. Like in the cardiovascular chapter, we talked about um, changeable and unchangeable risk factors. Your genetic makeup is an unchangeable risk factor. Um, it is what it is. It's what you get dealt. And so um, the way I say it is your genotype is what you are dealt, and your phenotype is how you deal with it. Um, or your changeable risk factors are how you deal with it. So um, there are things that are not under our control in our genetics. That is one of those things. So inherited disorders can be caused by a single gene expression, a single gene defect. It can be caused by a chromosomal defect like trisomy 21. Um, or it can be polygenic expression where several different genes are involved in the problem. Single gene disorders, they are a trait that's controlled by one set of alleles. And they're transmitted to subsequent generations. Chromosomal anomalies are usually caused by an error during meiosis, uh, like non-disjunction or translocation. So translocation, um, one part of one chromosome gets tacked on to the end of another chromosome, or um, parts of two get switched. And um, that can cause a problem. Sort of the basic um, tenet of molecular biology is that DNA 
codes for RNA, which codes for proteins, which then go out and do things in the body. So if you have a defect in your DNA, it codes for the wrong RNA, which makes a defective protein, which doesn't do what it's supposed to. And that's what causes the disorder, or contributes to the disorder in multifactorial diseases. So um, if you have an error during meiosis, that can be a problem. So um, teratogenic agents are agents that cause damage during embryonic or fetal development. We talked about it in the light of pharmaceutical drugs um, in Chapter 3 last quarter. But there are other things that can be um, teratogenic agents, like radiation, alcohol, drugs, hormones, cigarettes, German measles, lead and mercury in the environment. All those things can um, go through the placenta and harm the developing fetus. Uh, multifactorial disorders. A really large number of disorders are multifactorial, meaning there's a pattern of familial inheritance and an environmental component that triggers it somehow. So um, multiple sclerosis is a multifactorial disorder. Parkinson's is a multifactorial disorder. Um, lots of different disorders have um, a genetic predisposition, you can think of it that way, and then an environmental component that potentially triggers the um, evolution of the disease. Um, other congenital or developmental disorders result from premature birth, like a difficult labor, labor and delivery. Uh, CB, uh, CP, cerebral palsy, is an example of that. The difference between a congenital disorder and a developmental disorder, developmental disorders are non-progressive damage to the developing brain. Um, they cannot be passed on to the next generation. Genetic disorders, congenital disorders, are passed on to the next generation. So single gene disorders are classified by inheritance patterns. So the single gene controls a specific function, and there's a disorder in the single gene. So um, they're either recessive, meaning you have to have two bad copies of the gene in order to be affected, dominant, where you're affected with only one bad copy of the gene, an X-linked recessive, where you have to have two bad X's or a bad X and a Y to be affected. Um, so the single gene controls a specific function. Um, the non-lethal or non-disease sort of example is colorblindness. Um, it's a disorder that's controlled by a single gene. Sometimes you have systemic effects, such as in cystic fibrosis, Tay-Sachs disease, and um, fetal ketonuria. So cystic fibrosis is, this is discussed in the um, respiratory chapter, but we're going to talk about it here. Um, it is an inherited genetic disorder. The genes locate on chromosome 7. Um, interestingly enough, when I was um, studying genetics at the University of Colorado, um, I took human biochemical genetics from the guy who discovered the cystic fibrosis gene. He hadn't discovered it when I was there, but he did um, it subsequently. Um, what, it, what happens is there's an excessive amount of mucus excreted from endocrine glands with cystic fibrosis. The primary effects are seen in the lungs and the pancreas, where in the lungs the mucus obstructs the airflow in the bronchioles in the small bronchi. It can cause permanent damage to the bronchial walls, and um, infections are really common, caused usually by Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is um, just in the environment, and Staphylococcus aureus, which is one of our normal flora. The digestive tract um, can be affected. There's a condition in newborns called meconium ileus, um, blockage of the pancreatic ducts, um, obstruction of the bile ducts, and the salivary glands are often mildly affected. So this obstruction because of the excessive mucus is the theme for how um, a lot of uh, effects happen in cystic fibrosis. The reproductive tract, obstruction of the vas deferens in males and the cervix in the female. Um, the sweat glands have high sodium chloride content. So a lot of times if you don't already know that your baby has cystic fibrosis, the mother notices when she's kissing the baby that they taste salty. And then they will do a sweat test. Uh, they test the sweat for electrolytes to see um, uh, that's part of the diagnosis process. So in the book, in chapter 13, there is um, this chart showing the effects of um, 
cystic fibrosis, basically it's that exocrine gland dysfunction where excessive amounts of thick, sticky mucus, mucus obstruct the ducts of exocrine glands. So it affects all those different systems and um, can, has serious effects. So the signs and symptoms, they're that meconium ileus, which is the, um, the uh, basically undigested um, bile products. Um, salty skin, leading, which often leads to the performance of the sweat test and the diagnosis. Uh, signs of malabsorption, steatorrhea is like bulky, fatty stools, um, abdominal distension, and a lot of times um, failure to thrive because of um, malabsorption of nutrients. A chronic cough and frequent respiratory infections, which tend to increase over time and that failure to meet normal growth milestones because of the malabsorption of nutrients. So it's diagnosed by genetic testing. A lot of people, if they know they have cystic fibrosis in their family, they will get tested um, early so they know what to do. Um, it used to be that um, cystic fibrosis had a very bad prognosis or had shortened life, lifetime. Um, but now with um, effective interdisciplinary treatment, people are living longer with cystic fibrosis. Um, they do the sweat test, they test the sweat for electrolytes, um, they test the stool for enzymes, um, radiography and pulmonary function tests of the lungs, and blood gas analysis. Um, so the treatment is um, an interdisciplinary approach. Enzyme replacement therapy and a well-balanced diet, very important. Um, chest physical therapy, which you will learn the postural drainage and in, in your special topics class next fall. Um, that it's also used for other things besides cystic fibrosis. But um, with cystic fibrosis, it's really important to avoid buildup of that excessive mucus. And um, a lot of times, we're involved in teaching the parents how to do the postural drainage and the chest physical therapy to. Um, help prevent problems. There's also like a little um, vest that you can get that vibrates the person and breaks up the mucus in their lungs. Um, in PT we might be doing things like jumping, uh, trampoline type things to help break that up as well. So um, single gene disorders include autosomal dominance where um, if you have the gene, any one copy of the gene, you're going to have the effect. Um, a, this includes adult polycystic kidney disease, Huntington's chorea, familial hypercholesterolemia, and Marfan syndrome. All four of those things are um, don't have effect until later in life, and so a lot of times people don't find out they have them until after they've already passed them on to the next generation. So um, with autosomal recessives, both parents have to pass on the allele. So you have to have um, either two parents that are carriers or one, um, one that's homozygous and affected and one that's heterozygous and unaffected. So um, heterozygous, they have one good copy of the gene, one bad copy of the gene. Homozygous, they have two bad copies. Homozygous and affected. If they're homozygous and unaffected, um, then they will not pass on, they have two good genes, they're not going to pass it on to the next generation. So um, male and female children are equally affected because it's not one of the, uh, it's not the X and the Y involved, it's an autosome. Um, the homozygous recessive child has the disorder. The heterozygous child has no clinical signs of disease but is a carrier. And the homozygous um, unaffected doesn't have it and won't pass it on, isn't a carrier. So the way it breaks out, if you have um, two parents that are he heterozygous and unaffected, 25% um, of their kids will be um, homozygous affected. 25% potentially could be hom uh, homozygous unaffected, and 50% heterozygous and they're a carrier. So cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive, fetal ketonuria, and Tay-Sachs disease. Um, PKU is on chromosome 12. Cystic fibrosis is on number 7. And I don't, I'd have to look up to see which uh, chromosome Tay-Sachs is on. Uh, most people these days know when 
um, one of these genes is in their family because somebody's affected, and a lot of times we'll get tested for it. Autosomal dominant disorders, if you get one of the alleles, it causes the disorder, so only one parent needs to carry it. So um, there's no such thing as a carrier. If you're unaffected, then you don't have the disorder. So if, if you have the gene, you're affected. So some, like I was saying earlier, some of the conditions don't become evident until later in life. They're called delayed lethal genotype. So the allele for the disorder may have been passed on to the next generation before the diagnosis in the parent. So um, Marfan's and polycystic kidney disease and Huntington's, all of those are um, delayed lethal genotypes. So um, the, the parent can be, you can have an affected, one parent affected, one unaffected, and it, does the, um, it doesn't affect the sex of the children are uh, affected equally. Um, the children are either going to be affected or unaffected with that parent, so 50-50 chance. So um, these are the ones that are the um, delayed lethal genotype because they don't show up until adulthood. Probably the, with Huntington's, we'll talk about that more in the um, in neuro class, but uh, the the person who accidentally kicked me the hardest out of anybody I've ever been working with was someone with Huntington's because they have involuntary movements. I got kicked in the head. <laughs> it was minor. We were fine. So um, X-linked recessives, the allele is carried on the X but not on the Y. So heterozygous males are affected. Heterozygous females are carriers. Heterozygous recessive females may be affected. So if you had a carrier mother um, and an affected father, you could get a um, homozygous uh, recessive female. Um, the inheritance may appear to skip generations because of the um, heterozygous females being carriers. Um, Duchenne muscular dystrophy is one of them and classic or type A hemophilia. Um, a lot of times it appears to skip a generation because the females are carriers and a lot of times the affected um, son doesn't reproduce because of the type of illness it is. Um, Duchenne muscular dystrophy particularly, there's not a long lifespan on that. Um, hemophilia with good treatment people are living longer so you could have um, an affected father and a carrier mother and end up with an affected daughter. So excellent dominance, um, heterozygous males and females are affected. Um, there's reduced penetrance in females meaning um, the gene is not um, expressed as much in females because they, ha they still have a 50-50 chance of not getting it. Um, fragile X syndrome is um, an example of an X-linked dominant, and it's the most common genetic cause of cognitive defects. Um, the effects are variable, and they're related to the extent of the mutation of the allele. So, um, autosomal recessive, cystic fibrosis, PKU, um, sickle cell anemia, Tay-Sachs disease, um, excellent dominant disorders, fragile X, excellent recessive, color blindness, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and hemophilia A. So um, I just thought this uh, picture was interesting with the the color vision deficiency. So I guess if you're getting flowers for someone who is color blind, get them yellow flowers because they won't appreciate the red and green ones, or they'll think they're yellow anyway. So chromosomal disorders are where you have um, too many or not enough of um, an individual chromosome. Um, Down syndrome is trisomy 21, where instead of having two 21s, you have three 21s. Um, they can be caused by non-destruction or translocation. Um, Turner syndrome affects females. Um, you, it's a female with one X and no other sex chromosome. So they usually are short in stature and infertile. Um, Kleinfelter syndrome, XXY, um, you get two X's and a Y, and they result in um, infertility. 
Also, Kleinfelter can result in some connective tissue disorders. Um, and the few people that I've worked with with Kleinfelter were because they had connective tissue disorders and it was post-surgically they had some uh, revision done at their knee um, or something like that to um, correct some uh, connective tissue problem. So um, usually people with Kleinfelters are developmentally disabled. Um, as well, you know, they're uh, affected cognitively as well as physically. So with Down syndrome, um, trisomy 21, it's a common chromosomal disorder that affects physical and mental um, development, and the risk of trisomy 21 increases with maternal age. So um, they have screening tests now that are done in the first trimester. Uh, maternal blood screening and ultrasounds. Um, they use them as a screen for risk for Down syndrome. Amniocentesis or chorionic uh, VOS sampling are used to confirm the disorder prior to birth as well. So the characteristics, um, isn't this little guy cute? Small head, round face, flat facial profile, slanted eyes with an epicanthic fold, um, large tongue and a high arch palate which sometimes can interfere with feeding and swallowing. Um, small hands with a single palmar crease. So normally there are two palmar creases. Look at your hand right now. You'll see those. Um, with Down syndrome, there's a single one. Um, they tend to be short in stature. The muscles tend to be hypotonic. They have loose joints. So as babies and small children, a lot of times they need um, supportive furniture and um, supportive uh, bolstering. That's one of the things you'll um, work with uh, little kids in PT. Um, they are delayed in their developmental stages and cognitive impairment ranges from mild to major. Um, and they have delayed or incomplete sexual development. So a lot of times when you're working with um, children who have neurodevelopmental problems um, in PT, P um, children with congenital problems tend to be hypotonic, low tone low muscle tone and loose joints and so they will need support. Um, they will, you will help the parents with positioning and, and supportive um, equipment. Multifactorial disorders are when genetic influences combine with environmental factors. Um, so cleft palate, congenital hip dislocation, congenital heart disease, type 2 diabetes can be a multifactorial disorder. So you have your genetic factors, which I can talk about as a genetic predisposition, environmental factors. Somewhere in there you have a, a group of the population with both those things that are affected. Developmental disorders can be caused by exposure to drugs, chemicals, or radiation um, during childbearing years of the mother. Um, TORCH is an acronym for maternal infections that can result in anomalies and um, it can be prevented with routine prenatal screening tests or exposure to known um, teratogens in the first two months of development. So there's this great um, chart in the book where you can see when something happens within those first 12 weeks there tends to be a major defect. Something um, uh, affects, that affects the fetus in the first two weeks is often going to result in spontaneous miscarriage and death of the zygote and embryo. Um, major problems, major abnormalities happen in the first um, 10 to 12 weeks. Minor abnormalities happen in the later weeks of the term. Remember that for neuro in uh, winter quarter. Um, diagnostic tools, there may be testing available prior to conception, like the test for cystic fibrosis. You can find out if you carry the gene. Um, there are tests that can be done during the first trimester of pregnancy and in the newborn to diagnose. It's really good to get these things diagnosed early, particularly like cystic fibrosis. A lot can be done to improve that person's lifespan and quality of life. Um, testing is usually recommended for people who have a family history of a specific disease, a previous birth to a child with an abnormality, um, certain ethnic groups with high risk for specific disease like Tay-Sachs disease is isolated to certain ethnic groups, 
And for um, pregnant women over 35 years of age, it's considered high risk and they test for more because there's more of a chance of errors during meiosis with an older mother. Um, blood tests for pregnant women, the alpha fetoprotein test um, detects a lot of different um, neurological abnormalities. Um, amniocentesis and chorionic villi assays can be done. You get the karyotype and you can um, see what's going on. And neonatal testing, the excreted metabolites for fetal kidonuria, the sweat testing for the cystic fibrosis, and blood tests. So the more you know about the different disorders, if you have a child with one of these disorders, the more you can do to Im improve their quality of life. Um, genetic engineering is isolating, copying, and transplanting genes. And it's done now in agriculture. That's how they produce genetically modified organisms that they put in foods. Um, it it's potentially can be done in microorganisms, plants, animals, and humans. And the ultimate goal is to insert a normally functioning gene um, in to replace the bad one. Um, it's technically possible in humans, but clinical trials haven't been universally successful, and it's not actually being done. Um, gene therapy um, identifies a gene and a protein responsible for the condition, like diabetes, for example, they, they know the gene that codes for insulin, um, and insulin's the protein, it determines, determines how the gene expression is controlled, and it produces a drug that will inhi inhibit the gene expression. So there's um, focus on um, cancer growth promoters that um, has resulted in these type of drugs. So in the picture it shows using an adenovirus vector for delivering the gene into the cell because that's what viruses do, right? They inject their um, DNA into a cell. So this is using the, using the adenovirus with the um, modified gene in it to inject it into a cell. So it has promise, but it's not actually um, being done right now. So um, genetic screening and DNA testing um, is, is currently being done. It's either screening at-risk populations for a specific allele. Um, there are some concerns regarding cost and privacy and access to information. Um, DNA testing to identify p you know, paternity or forensic um, purposes. and. There has been legislation drafted to protect genetic rights of individuals with health care, employment, and insurance, but um, it's a box that we don't necessarily want to open, you know, because who knows what could happen later with it. We've all seen those movies on TV. So um, designer drugs or proteomics, it's really um, designing a drug that's going to act differently in a genetically different individual. So the idea is, and they're exploring this a lot with cancer treatment, the idea is that a, you can develop a drug that's tailored to an individual's genotype and reduce unwanted side effects and specifically target cancer cells. So this is, again, a new area that's being explored, and um, I'm sure much is yet to come on it.